hopefully all that has proceeded was taken into consideration of the dangers of the tongue, of backbiting, of tail carrying, of talking about things that don't concern us, and all of the other things that we mentioned about um, the, the most dangerous uses of the tongue. The tongue, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that I can guarantee be baitin fi rabd al jannah. I can guarantee a mansion in paradise for the individual who will leave off arguing, even if he's right. Man tarak al 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 mira wa in kana muhibqa to leave off argumentation and debate, to leave off backbiting, leave off tail carrying, and we come to number ten from the dangers of the tongue. وهو المدح وله آفات منها ما يتعلق بالمادح ومنها ما يتعلق بالمندوح. His number ten is praising people, using your tongue to praise people. And praise, it has some detriments that are related to the person that is doing the praising and the person that you are praising. The next time we think about saying something great about someone, there's a couple of things that we need to consider. For some of us, we don't care. We'll say, oh, mashallah, this is the most religious person I know. Or well, this person, mashallah, tabarakallah, he's this, he's that, you know. And we're not really careful about how we use our tongue. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unrestrictedly because he deserves to be praised. Wallahu akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything and everything. So when we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can praise Allah unrestrictedly. But when it comes to praising another human being, we should be very cautious and very careful about how we do that. And some of us, we get very carried away with that. We end up hurting ourselves and hurting the person that we're praising. The scholars, they say, he said that the from the dangers of praising someone is that you can praise someone for something that you don't really even know the reality of it. And no one has the ability to actually ascertain the facts of what you are praising someone for. Like saying someone is wara, and wara in Arabic is a word that is used to describe someone who doesn't do something until he knows whether it is pleasing to Allah or not. He doesn't say anything, he doesn't do anything until first he knows whether or not this action is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called al wara in Arabic. And you would not know that a person is wari'un. That you would not know that a person has this quality or this characteristic so much that you would praise him for it. Or to say, wallahi, this brother is religious. Mutawwa. He's religious. Multazim. Deen. Like, mashallah, this person. You don't know. You don't know what the person does behind the scenes. Everything that glitters is not gold. Some of the Sahaba, they saw a man out on the battlefield fighting. And they say, they said they screamed out that his, uh, that his, his place is in paradise. His place is in paradise. And the Prophet وسلم, said, no, he said, no, he's in the hellfire. So one of the Sahaba said, oh, Messenger of Allah, look at him on the battlefield fighting. If he's not from the people of paradise, then none of us is from the people of paradise. The Prophet said, No, he is from the people of the hellfire. So one of the companions wanted to find out why. Why? Look at him on the battlefield fighting. Why would he say that he's from the people of the hellfire? And the man, he followed him. Come to find out he had a wound in his back that he couldn't be patient with. He went by himself to a remote area, he put the butt of his sword in the ground and he laid down on his sword and killed himself. The Sahabi who saw this 
came back and said, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَكَ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ اللَّهِ He said, I swear by the one who sent you with the truthful message of Allah, indeed he is from the people of the hellfire. Because he killed himself. So the point that I'm making is that you don't know, you don't know who's from people of paradise, who's from the people of the hellfire. We can say, أَحْتَسِبُهُ كَذَا وَكَذَا أَحْسَبُهُ كَذَا وَكَذَا لَكِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى حَسِبُهُ I consider him to be some, such and such, and Allah knows him better. I consider him to be such and such, but Allah knows him better. That is the proper way to praise someone. That is the proper way in Islam to praise someone because we don't know. The Prophet ﷺ was walking with some of his companions on the battlefield after one of the battles. And they were looking at some of the dead, dead bodies of the companions on the ground. So they will pass by an individual and they will say, Fulanu shaheed. Faqala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na'am. Huwa shaheed. Qala Fulanu shaheed. Qala na'am. Huwa shaheed. Qala Fulanu shaheed. Qala bal huwa min ahl al-nar. Dakhl al-nar fi qamis. Sarak al-qamis. Qabla al-tawzi' al-qasma. They walk by an individual and they say, Oh, he is a martyr. Prophet said, yes, he's a martyr. He's from the people of paradise. They walk past another man and say, oh, he's a martyr. He said, yes, he's from the people of paradise. They walk past another man and say, he's a martyr. The Prophet said, no, he's from the people of the hellfire. He stole a shirt from the spoils of war before I had the chance to distribute it from, to my companions. He entered into the hellfire for stealing a shirt. Does that mean that he will remain in the hellfire forever? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Anyone who dies from Ahl al-Qibla dies bearing witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped except God alone and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger will never remain in the hellfire forever even though he may have to go to the hellfire for a particular period of time. But the point that I'm making is that not everything that is hidden is apparent to everyone. These qualities that we praise people for, these are things that some of these things are from the affairs of the unseen. And we don't know, and here we are praising somebody for something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So from the dangers of praising someone is that you can praise somebody for something la haqiqata lahu, that there's no reality to it, or you can praise him for something la sabila li ittila ali that there is no way for anyone to know this except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, فَيَنْتَهِ إِلَى الْكَلِبِ He said, so your praises will end up becoming lies. And you're praising somebody for something that you yourself don't even know and you're actually lying. He said, وَقَدْ يَمْدَحْ أَوْ يُمْدَحْ مَنْ يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُذَمْ He said, and you could praise someone who actually deserves to be criticized. You can praise someone that you actually that actually deserves to be criticized. It could be an individual. We know that this person is fulan or fulan, and he commits such and such a sin. But when we get in a gathering amongst people, we praise him. Oh, mashallah, tabarakallah. This brother is this. This brother is that. Kate, wa kate. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Wa yambagi in you then. And he is an individual who deserves to be criticized. Criticized. And we're praising him in gatherings. We're praising, and this a lot of times happens in politics. Politicians, who Muslims want to have a good hand in, in politics, so they'll bring a politician, a particular politician, to a Muslim gathering, such as the Eid, such as you know, Jumu'ah, such as Muslim gatherings, as fundraisers, X, Y, Z. These are non-Muslims, with all due respect. And some of them politicians who haven't done anything for the Muslim community or the non-Muslim community for that matter and we'll bring him to a Muslim gathering and we'll extol him and we'll praise him so that we can save face or we can look good as Muslims and we do it all the time we do it all the time because if the non-Muslims don't praise us for something or don't give us the stamp of approval then it's not official it's not authentic and that's part of our problem today is that we look for approval outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the stamp of approval, that is all of the authenticity that you need. That is all of the authenticity that you need. 
But we'll bring someone in and everybody else is looking like this person is, doesn't even need to be praised and we'll bring him to a Muslim gathering, extol him, praise him for something that he has never done for the community. This happens a lot in politics. وَقَدْ رُوِيَ فِي حَدِيثِ أَنَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْضَبْ إِذَا مُدِحَ الْفَاسِقِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْضَبْ إِذَا مُدِحَ الفاسق that it mentioned in the authentic hadith it was mentioned in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said that indeed Allah gets angry when a fasik is praised a fasik is someone who openly commits major sins openly commits major sins commits zina, commits riba whatever the case may be he does it in public, he doesn't care and the worst type of person right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates is for a person to praise an individual like this in public. To praise an individual like this in public. To say, oh, this person is this, mashallah, this person is that. And with many of the Muslims, especially from amongst the African American brothers and sisters, you'll find that they're in the habit of praising people who are open sinners. Open sinners. You sin by, by night, and then in the day, we're putting you on the minbar. During the day, mashallah, tabarakallah, you're on Twitter, you're on Facebook, you know, engaging in conversations that you yourself have absolutely no business engaging in certain conversation. You cannot be on Facebook uncover without a hijab on, without a jibab on, and then come to a Muslim gathering and be extolled and be praised in front of the people. That's not gonna, that's not appropriate. You cannot be known in the community for zina, known in the community for all types of fisk, all types of sin and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then come on the day of Jumu'ah, or come on the day of the Eid, or come to a Muslim gathering, and we're going to extol you, we're going to praise you. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yaghlub ila mudi al fasik, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry, angry, when a fasik is praised. When we praise someone who is a major sinner, who sins in public and doesn't care. We all sin, that's not what I'm referring to. We all fall victim to some, some form of sin. The Prophet said, That all of the children of Adam are sinners, but the best of the sinners are those who repent. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone who you see out in public engaging in major sin in public and then come into the private institutions of Muslims and we extol him, we praise him, we hold him in high regard, we revere him in public when in fact he should be someone who is blamed, criticized and condemned in the, com in the community. Blamed and criticized in the community. But we praise him, mashallah to barakallah. وَأَمَّا الْمَمْدُوحِ فَإِنَّهُ يُحْدِثُ فِيهِ كِبْرًا وَإِعْجَابًا وَهُمَا مُهْلَكَانِ وَلِهَذَا قَالَ نَبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم لما سمع رجلا يمدح رجلا ويل لك قد قطعت أنق صاحبك Also the danger for the person that is being praised This is the danger we talked about the danger of the one that does the praising the danger of the one that is being praised and that is that the person that you are praising could become prideful, could become haughty and arrogant because of the praises of the people. That he could possibly be afflicted with arrogance, and conceit. And these two types of behaviors will destroy an individual to become conceited and to become haughty and arrogant because of the praises of the people. Because people extol you, people praise you to such a degree that you believe that you are perfect. You believe that you are above other people. And the Prophet وسلم, he heard a man praising another man. Heard a man praising another man. And he said to him, Woe to you, you have cut the neck of your brother. You meaning you have destroyed him. You praise him to such a degree, you have destroyed him. You have destroyed him. وَقَدْ رَوَى حَسْنَ الْبَصْرِ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى كَانَ عُمَرَ قَاعِدًا وَمَعَهُ نَفَرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ حَوْلَهُ إِذْ أَقْبَلَ الْجَارُودِ 
فقال رجل هذا سيد ربيع هذا سيد فلان وفلان فسمعها عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه ومن حوله وسمعها الجارود فلما دنا منه ضربه عمر بدرة فقال ما لي وما لك يا عمر المؤمنين فقال عمر فقال رجل ما لي وما لك فقال عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه ما لي وما لك وما لك أما سمعتها قال سمعتها فما فقال عمر خشيت أن يخالد قلبك منها شيء فأحببت أن أطاطئ منك أطاطئه منك Umar عنه was sitting with some of his companions and a man walked by who was known as a soldier in the army very big, very strong and people when they saw him coming through they started to praise him the people were sitting around Umar and they started to praise him oh this is such and such, this is such and such right? when Umar heard them praising him Umar he used to walk with a stick he took his stick and as the man walked by Umar smacked him in the neck with the stick and the man grabbed his neck, he turned around, he looked at Omar, he said, like, what did I do wrong, Omar? He's like, why did you hit me? What's wrong? What's, what is it between me and you? What did I do? Omar said, what did you do? He said, didn't you hear what the man just said about you? He said, yeah, I heard it, but so what? Omar said, I, I fear that some of what he said would creep into your heart and destroy you. So I decided that I would beat it out of you. I would beat it out of you. Meaning, he Omar didn't want the man to hear what the people were saying about him and then make him make him make his head grow, make him think that he was bigger than what he was. So he said, I fear that this would mix with your heart, get inside your heart. So I decided that I would beat it out of you. I would get it out of you before it became in contact with your heart. This was Umar who trying to protect you know the believers from you know arrogance protecting the believers from being praised and extolled in public like that so that you begin to believe that you are more than what you are and our deen we're taught to be humble and our deen we're taught to put no one above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a saying that the Arabs they say man you عظم من كان الله من you عظم الله subhanahu wa ta'ala لا يعظم خلقه that whoever extols and magnifies Allah does not have the ability to do that to his creation. I'm sorry, I can't praise you. I can't raise you. You can say good things about people. That's not what I'm saying. If a person has achieved a certain level or is deserving of some level of praise, we have been commanded to put everyone in their proper place. But we do not extol and revere someone above a status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. We put everyone in their proper place. So when you are in the habit of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great in your eyes, you don't see another human being to be great. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is alim, is great in your eyes, you don't see another human being to be great. When the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the standard in your eyes of a man, you don't see another man to be above him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person may come and you may say, My, MashaAllah, look at such and such, look at such and you might say, Alhamdulillah, you know, good brother. And someone might look at you and say, oh, you hating on him, or, you know, what are you jealous of him? No, I'm not jealous of him. But I don't see another man to be greater than the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's my standard. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is my standard. I don't see anybody to be greater than him. Not a sheikh, not an imam, not a mufti, not a mawla. I don't care who you are. I don't see you to be above the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great in his eyes, he does not see another human being to be great. Hadha wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam al taslim al kathira wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa